She would meet guys on her own page. And then if they ever asked her, how do I know you're real? She'd send them a message as me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking facts about MTV's catfish. You trust him more than you trust me? Yeah. For this list, we'll be looking at the most surprising things you may not know about this popular series. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen on Catfish? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Not all catfishes are strangers. I really don't know what to say. I'm really humiliated by my family once again. This fact may not come as a surprise to avid viewers of the MTV series. But some casual fans may be shocked to learn that not all catfishes are strangers to those they're manipulating. Throughout the years, we've seen cousins, siblings, and former lovers duping those closest to them with fake personas. In the season three episode, Antoine and Tony, Carmen used catfishing as a tool to get back at her cousin for past comments he made about her. You should have never called me a fat ass Kelly Price. Dre and Casey showed us another version of such familial drama in season eight, with Jackie catfishing her brother to teach him a lesson about cheating. Are you Rebecca? Man, what the f That's my sister. Apparently, you can't trust anyone. Number nine, Neve was catfished more than once. You got catfished again? Well, yeah, wait, oh. hold on. Before there was Catfish the TV show, there was the 2010 documentary. The feature film followed Neve Shulman as he got catfished by a woman on Facebook. After sharing his personal experience and spending years helping others confront their own catfishes, one might think that Neve could never be successfully tricked again. Fool me once, strike one. But fool me twice, strike three. Unfortunately, they'd be wrong. In the season seven episode, Sheila and Rich Dallas, he revealed that he was once catfished by a girl hired to handle his social media pages. He soon found out that she was repeatedly using his profile to legitimize her own. Posing as Neve, she messaged strangers she'd been talking to on her own account in a bid to convince them she was real. And then she would delete it right away. So she was clearing her messages right under my nose for months. Number eight, edited investigations. Okay, so on one hand, this guy Antonio sounds wonderful, but on the other hand, Something's up because what's his deal? Why is he hard to meet up with? Time and time again, Neve and his co-host are presented with people hiding every aspect of themselves, yet still seem to uncover their slip-ups in a matter of minutes. The episodes make them seem like the speediest detectives in the business. Do you often lie to, to get out of things or do you make things up easily? Or just on the internet? In reality, though, it can take them many, many hours to find evidence of a catfish's true identity. Of course, producers are aware of the facts prior to filming and know how each episode should end. But the hosts themselves are essentially flying blind and have to draw their own conclusions from what little information they can find. The best thing to do is just to always research. And not just research the catfish, but also research the hopeful as well, because you never know what you're going to find. Number seven. Alternate titles. It's strange to think about today, but Catfish wasn't always going to be called that. The 2010 documentary and subsequent MTV series it led to could have had a few different titles. You know, I could take all of your photos and all of your photos. And download them. Maybe? Download them and make new profiles with totally different names and never make friends with, the, with people who knew you. The possible alternatives reportedly included the Facebook family, Michigan Impossible, and It's All Downhill From Here. The name they eventually settled on actually came from a quote by Vince, the husband of Neve's catfish Angela. So this guy came up with the idea that if you put these cods in these big vats, put some catfish in with them, and the catfish will keep the cod agile. His metaphor about the sea creatures was a truly fascinating one and gave us the term that's now synonymous with fake online profiles. And there are those people who are catfish in life and they keep you on your toes. Number six, catfishes often contact the show. MTV's Catfish typically starts with Neve and his co-host being contacted by someone who believes they, or someone close to them, is being catfished. Yet in reality, it's rather common for the perpetrator of the fraud to initiate the process. Normally this is the part where I would tell you who I am, 
but I'm afraid if I do, you'll close the email. The thing is, you've caught me catfishing in the past. In fact, the casting application is practically designed to facilitate this. It actually asks people if they, quote, have a secret to confess to their online partner. There are actually two emails pertaining to the same relationship, but they're from different people. The question of whether the applicant thinks they're being duped comes after this. As Catfish has risen in popularity, more folks have tried to lie in an attempt to get on the show. Well, obviously she contacted the show. Right. But it's just like, it's not true. Don't know Hunter. Don't like her at all like that. Me and Melly only did it because she asked us to. Fortunately, fact checks are done, usually revealing any attempt at deceit. Number five, waivers. Sorry to uh, sort of sneak up on you. We spoke to Todd, he said you guys were out here surfing. It may seem like this show surprises Catfish at their homes, but one of its executive producers, Marshall Eisen, has revealed that's far from being the case. Oh yeah, he didn't answer, and then we thought maybe he stood us up, so then we like walked away. Production actually ensures that all parties know what's going on and are aware of what's expected of them prior to making an episode. By the time the cameras start to roll, every person involved has individually signed a waiver agreeing to participate and be filmed. Let's just figure out how we can make this situation go as best as possible. Unfortunately, this doesn't necessarily guarantee that the catfish will show up when the time comes. Like, I've seen the show. I know how people tend to look on the show. I was looking out for what I thought was our best interest by not doing it, and you decided differently. Neve and his co-hosts have occasionally been confronted with long waits leading to some real uncertainty. Number four, changing the dictionary. And now, Yakko Warner sings all of the words in the English language. There's no doubt that this MTV show has changed the way we think about online dating. But did you know that it's also had a direct impact on the English language? In 2014, Merriam-Webster officially added a new definition to the word catfish, immortalizing the metaphorical phrase that was initially put forth in the 2010 film. And uh, I thank God for the catfish because we'd be droll, boring, and dull if we didn't have somebody nipping at our fin. Don't worry, it's still a fish with long tactile barbels. But the term now also refers to, quote, a person who sets up a false personal profile on a social networking site for fraudulent or deceptive purposes. That same year, Merriam-Webster also added words like hashtag, selfie, and social networking to their repertoire. Selfie joins 150 other new words and phrases including hashtag, catfish as a verb, and spoiler alert in the 11th edition of the Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. We'd say catfish is in pretty good company. Number three, providing therapy. The fact that you're here doing this means that there's some part of you that wants to change. But I mean, just the first thing is just being honest about it. Confronting years of lies can be a pretty emotional ordeal, and Catfish wants to make sure that everyone is okay after an episode is wrapped. In order to do so, MTV provides participants with therapy, in a 2014 interview, executive producer Marshall Eisen said that the service was put in place to, quote, make sure that people are taken care of. Neve has also spoken of the program's desire to heal, calling it a, quote, therapy show that allows people to talk about their inner feelings. I really need your forgiveness. I need your forgiveness so I can move on. While it's easy to think of Catfish as just another dramatic reality show, it's provided necessary closure to numerous people in online relationships. It's nice to know that they don't leave people hanging after filming stops. Look, we've covered uh, a lot of these Catfish stories, and I can't tell you that I, I, the pain that I've seen it cause. Number two, banned episode. There he is, Blake. Hey, how's it going? Even the most loyal Catfish fans may be out of luck when trying to watch the complete series, as there are rumors of a lost episode. Then there has to be another one. There's not. I get, I get my, my job, we're, we're losing our house. They owe us. Blake and Kirsten aired on MTV, but it reportedly grew harder to find in the United States afterward, although Canadian viewers have had more luck. Its content seems pretty typical for Catfish. It follows a man named Blake as he tries to meet up with his online girlfriend, Kirsten. She's extremely outgoing. She's unlike anyone I'd ever met in my life. 
And so I was immediately, you know, fascinated by her. He eventually finds out that she's actually a catfish named Kendra and has been using another woman's photos as her own. Obviously, you're not exactly the person in the photographs. Sorry. Considering the episode's average plotline, some fans believe that its obscurity is due to Kendra suing the show, though this hasn't been confirmed by MTV. Glad we did this. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. All a hoax? Don't touch me. Better back Seriously, up. Man. Don't touch me. Better back up. What kind of is this? Don't better chill me. out, man. Whether you're a fan of the MTV series or not, you've probably seen one of its most infamous subjects. Justin Volpel was the catfish in the season 2 episode Artist and Jess. He became a minor internet celebrity after an unforgettable response led to some hilarious memes. I give it to you, you got me there! But stories about the whole thing being a hoax also started to float around. Volpel himself has claimed that he actually worked with artists and recommended that he do the show with him. A week ago we put out a video basically saying, hey, you know, we're gonna we're going to tell the truth. We're kind of sick and tired of being buried by you guys. While production knew Justin was the catfish, they had no idea he and Artis knew each other. If his story is indeed true, the duo essentially succeeded in tricking many people. It's official. I am the winner, aka a better liar. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.